Well, hi everyone, I'm Bob the Science Guy, and today we're going to come back for part three of the Texas Slide Rule Championship problem set. This is going to be problems 11 through 15. Now the problems are starting to get a little bit more complex, so let's go ahead and see my approach to solving them. Mine's not the only way that you can do it. I'm sure there's some hairy-eared engineers out there that have different ways, and I welcome your comments on that. But let's go ahead and get set up. Now as before, we're going to have the slide rule up top. Down in the left lower corner is going to be the questions, and in the right lower corner is going to be my notes. So let's dive right in and get the first one. This is number 11, and we've got 1.87 times 10 to the 2 times the square root of 7, 1, 12 times the square root of 7, 12 all over 0 0.376. Now, once again, we're going to move the decimal place and make that a minus 1. What, what about this 712, though? 712 will be an odd number of digits, so therefore we're going to go ahead and solve it on the left side of the A scale. So 712 will be right here. There's 710. Eh, probably about right there. And if we look straight down, we see the square root is going to be approximately 26... 0.7 it looks like. Now you recall that when we take a number like 712, we want to convert that to a number that only has one or two digits to the left of the decimal place. And we have to do that, we will move the decimal place for square roots two at a time. Recall that we move them three at a time for cube roots. Once we solve that, we have to move the decimal place back half as much as we moved it in the first place. So if we moved it to the left 2, we have to move it to the right 1. And as a result, the square root of 712 is approximately 26.7. Now it's a pretty straightforward problem. So we can go ahead and actually replace that square root with 2.67 to the 1, and then 3.76 to the negative 1. So our answer is going to be 2 plus 1 minus a minus one. So our answer is going to be to the 10 to the 4. And what do we what do we have here? We've got 2 over 3. So it might end up being 10 to the 3. Because we have a lot of change to the right of the decimal place on all of these, we're going to have to actually see where it is. So right now we're looking at about 0.67 times 10 to the 4. Let's take it to the slide rule and see what we get. So let's go ahead and take this out. So we've got one point 87 is our starting point, and that's going to be right there. Then we're going to divide it by 3.76, and there we are. And then we're going to multiply it by 2.67. So there's 2.6, 2.66. Looks like we've got 1.33 times Originally, we were looking at 10 to the 4, and it looks like it's over 1. So I don't think that we're going to have a fraction here. I think that's going to be times 10 to the 4. And that is indeed the correct answer. All right, what do we have for number 12? We have 371 times 10 to the 2, 1.72 times 10 to the negative 2. And that's going to be over something a little different here. It's going to be over 3. 32s. How are we going to address this? Well, we probably could address, address this directly using the inverted scales, but I think what we're going to do instead is we're going to move this up here and make that 3.2 times 10 to the 1 and just divide everything by 3. So let's go see what we have here. Uh, 3 times 1 times 3 is about 9 over 3. So we're going to have an answer around 3. So we've got 2 plus a minus 2 plus a 1 over a 0. So this is probably going to be right around 30, it looks like. Let's go ahead and do it on the slide roll. So we're going to come out here. Uh, first one is going to be 3.71. And that is going to be, there's 3.7. 3.71 is about right there. We're going to divide that by 3. And then we're going to multiply it by 172 which is right there. And then we're going to multiply again by 3.2. 
And I think what we'll do is we'll use the CI scale for that. Come right there. Now let's come out here to the index. See what we get. And there we are. Looks like we have 6.81 roughly. So our answer is going to be 6.81 times 10 to the 1, or 68.1. And that is indeed the correct answer. So onward and upward. Let's go over to problem number 13. Okay, so here's problem number 13. We've determined that it's going to be approximately 12 over 72 times 10 to the negative 4. So let's go ahead and just run it through. So we're going to start off 1.27. So we're going to go ahead and put our cursor on 1.27 on the D scale. Then we're going to divide it by 9.04. And because that's on the far side of the scale, it might be more convenient to simply divide it with a C folded scale. And that would put it right about there. Then we're going to multiply by 3.31. So I think what we'll do is we'll come out here to the index. And then we're going to multiply by 3.31 right here. So there's 3.4. There's 3.31 3, there. Then we're going to divide it by 8.73. So here's 8.75 right there. Okay, that looks pretty good. So our answer will be under the index here. And then what we need to do is we need to multiply that by 4.21. So let's put the index right under it. And then come over here to 4.21. And 4.21 will be right about there. And it looks like we have 2.21. 1, 2, 5. 2.25. Looks like 2.25 times 10 to the negative 4. And that is correct. So let's go down to number 14. Okay, now this one's just a little bit different. So what we're going to have here, we have two terms on the top and three on the bottom. So let's go ahead and see how we'll handle that. But first, let's get our magnitude straight. So we have 2 plus 0 minus 2 is 0, minus 0 is 0, minus 2 is 10 to the negative 2. Now, eight, so we got about 72, and that's going to be over 15. So this is going to be more than 1, but it's going to be less than 10, so we can leave our powers of 10 intact here. So let's go ahead and hit this one. Now, what I'm going to do on this one is I'm actually going to start here at the 1. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to divide 1 by 3.17. So we'll come right on out here. So there is 3.17 about right there. Then I'm going to multiply that by 8.04. And to do that, I'm simply going to come over here to the 8.04, which would be about right there. Then we're going to divide by 5.07. And once again, we'll just divide it right there. Nice little chain action here. Then we're going to multiply it by 9.61, which is right here. And then finally, we're going to divide it by 1.21. And uh, we can just do that right here, like so. There's 1.21. It looks like our answer is going to be 3.97. 3.97. So 3.97 times 10 to the negative 2. And that is the correct answer. Now, last but not least, number 15. What's interesting about number 15? Okay, well, we've got a function here. It's 37 times pi. So what we're going to do is we're going to go 3.7 times 10 to the 1 times 3.14 times 9.76 times 10 to the 2 is going to be over 3.18 times 10 to the 3. 
So we're going to have 1 plus 0 plus 2 is 3 minus 3. So we have 10 to the 0 tentatively. Then we have 3 times 3 times 9 is 81 over 3. Now 81 over 3 is about 27. So this is going to be a 10 to the 1 term. It's more than 10 but less than 100. So our final answer is going to be 10 to the 1. So let's go ahead and run this through. All righty, first one, 3.7. So 3.7 is right there. Next, we're going to divide by 3.18, which is going to be right there. We're going to multiply by 3.14, which is pi. And then we're going to multiply by 9. 0.76. So we'll come, come up here to the folded scale. We'll go to 9.7. And what do we have down here on the D scale? We've got 3.5. Looks like about 0.57. So we have 3.57 times 10 to the 1. And that is the correct answer for question number 15. We're probably going to do one more set later on today, and then I'm going to get back to the trig functions tomorrow. But I thought we'd do a little practice time first just to kind of break up the course. So this is Bob the Science Guy. Give me a follow-up for more slide rule action. See you again soon. Take care.